So welcome everyone. This is Audacity episode 19. Uh, I'm Nate, I'm Director of Communications here at the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber. And I'm Lindsay, I'm the Vice President of Destination Marketing at Visit OKC. So Kaylee, our usual co-host, could not be here today, but uh, we wanted to go ahead and record an episode because we wanted to make sure and talk a little bit about the new upcoming, or actually has already happened, the exciting launch of the Modern Frontier Beer and the Modern Frontier Campaign with Lindsay. So uh, we wanted to go ahead and shoot an episode real quick and get something out the door on that. So thanks for being here today. Yeah, happy to be here. So tell us a little bit about the Modern Frontier Campaign that the CBB is doing kind of in general, and what was the inspiration? for some of that and and uh, what are you guys looking to do? Sure, so our Modern Frontier campaign launched last year, uh, last February, and really it was to give Oklahoma City a unified voice, um, really to rally locals and uh, to promote to visitors of the destination. Uh, before we had campaigns that were kind of different for different audiences, whether it was meeting planners or leisure visitors, and so this gave us kind of one voice and really wanted something that could uh, embody both our past but also the, the future that we're still defining. Right, yeah, and so I think that's the great thing about the tagline is that it really does show like a little bit about Oklahoma City's past but also a little bit about its present and its future. Absolutely. So and then uh, the beer partnership really just kind of came about organically so we've had a lot of different opportunities come up once we launched the campaign. Um, Different businesses, local partners that have stepped up and in unexpected ways and Homeland was looking to create a new craft beer uh, line that was really exclusive to their stores and um, they were also working with some local brewers that are in the Oklahoma City area. So uh, they had gone down the path to kind of look for different names and they wanted it to rotate and so trademarking is kind of tricky and really we were that piece of the puzzle where we said, hey, we have this great tagline, the modern frontier. So we were kind of that last piece of the puzzle that they needed. And um, so the beer just launched last week and uh, we're excited to have this first one out. That's awesome. Yeah. And so your launch partner for this first edition is Anthem. And so I want Mm -hmm. to point out Anthem Brewing Company, Chamber Member. So that's really cool. Homeland stores, Chamber Member as well. So of course, we always love when Chamber Members partner together on things. So this is a uh, great example of that that sort of thing. Absolutely. Homeland... They do a lot of great local programming and partnerships, and so uh, really we thought it was going to maybe just be in their Oklahoma City stores, but they've expanded it to uh, 68 stores under their brand um, and other kind of affiliated brands, United, Cash Saver, that um, are around the state. So um, this definitely has a presence beyond Oklahoma City, which is kind of cool. Right. And I think this is a great beer if you're a craft beer person. I know we talk a lot about beer on this show, but (laughs) it is what it is, okay? But uh, if you're a a, a beer person at all, I think this is actually a really good way to launch the beer uh, in terms of both. It's, It's a really accessible style, I think. I think even if you think that you're not into craft beer, this is something that you should give a, a give a give a try to. For I think sure. it's a really good. It's a light and a, a crisp lager style, but mm-hmm. it's still got a lot more complexity than some of the macro brews that you're going to have. You know, it's got some nice floral notes um, and a little. I'm, I'm getting a little citrus on the back end too. Absolutely, yeah. So. And it's. I think you know, drinkability is definitely uh, part of the mix intentionally. I think all the different rotations. You know, each quarter we're expecting to have a different Oklahoma City brewer ha- come up with a flavor. It will always be called the Modern Frontier beer, but it'll have a different um, flavor, different uh, volume number, um, but I think all of them will be really easy to drink and uh, accessible. Yeah, so a great way to showcase uh, just a little part of the excellent beer culture that we have going on here, so that's great. Yeah. That's very cool. Okay, so we'll look for more editions of that as they come out, and it's also, actually, it's really good that Lindsay's here because a lot of the things that we're going to talk about are sort of, you know, visitor tourist related today. So yeah. um, I know the first thing that I had on my list is the First Americans Museum. So they just recently mm-hmm. announced that they were going to be open finally now. Uh, it's been a long time coming if you have followed this saga at all. But so they are actually they have announced a formal opening weekend and that's going to be seven, uh, September 18th and 19th, I believe. Yes, and it's been something we've been counting down for, gosh, probably 10 years or more. But um, if you drive over uh, by it, you can see the construction is really finishing up. They're getting exhibits in place. It's an exciting time. Yeah, I think this is going to be real. This is going to be something that everybody is going to want to go check out. We've got a really nice piece actually in Velocity this week Mm -hmm. that I'll have a link to in the show notes that gets into uh, a few more details and some behind the scenes things of some of the exhibits that they're planning and some of the things that they're doing. So this is this is going to be a really good offering for both locals and for visitors alike, I think. Really, and internationally. You know, right. we get a lot of interest um, in American Indian culture in Oklahoma. Um, a lot of UK travelers, a lot of Germans. 
speaking Europe really are fascinated with um, all the different cultures of American Indian tribal nations. And um, this museum will tell the story of all 39 tribes that have been in Oklahoma. So it's not just focused on, on um, this local area. It really tells a broader story statewide. So it's exciting. Right, right. And one of the things that I thought was neat about that, too, is, is the focus on sort of the the distinctives to the individual 39 mm -hmm. tribes, you know, so rather than sort of lumping every everyone together, you know, you'll be able to find out, you know, what what makes uh, one tribal group different and, and distinct culturally, artistically, so on and so forth than others. And so I think that's really a, a cool thing that they're going to do there for all 39 tribes that, that, that call Oklahoma home today. Definitely. I think the nuances between, you know, beadwork or languages or other kinds of traditions, I mean, there's just, it's endless, uh, right. really fascinating and uh, exciting excited to see the programming around it and uh, Smithsonian quality. I mean, they have a lot of partnership with the Smithsonian Museum and, and artifacts that they're going to bring here and uh, just a game changer for us. Exactly. I think it's going to be a really cool offering. So uh, put that on your calendars uh, towards the end of September uh, and beyond. Be sure to go and check that out. We also wanted to mention that uh, the Dodgers and the Energy have both, both announced that they're going to play in-person schedules this season. So that is very, very cool. And so uh, May 13th is going to be the Dodgers' home opener. Their season actually starts May 6th, but they're going to be you know, playing here at the Bricktown Ballpark as usual. And I know that they do have some social distancing measures in place, uh, a lot of things to help uh, keep people safe and make sure that people feel comfortable there when they go out, uh, go out to enjoy a game. But that's going to be really cool, so I'm glad that they're back. Uh, we've had a, a lot of news come out recently having to do with the Energy FC, our soccer, local soccer club. And they have actually announced that their first game is going to be April 24th, and that's going to be versus Tulsa in the uh, the so-called Black Gold Derby, or Derby, <laughs> if you prefer. So that's going to be their first home game of the season, so uh, you guys be sure to go check that out. They've picked up some hot new players, too. So yeah, they have. To watch. We've had <laughs> some good coverage on Velocity of some of the uh, what the Energy has been doing there, yeah, on yeah. the personnel front and, and some other news. And so uh, I'll have a link to that article in the show notes as well. But be sure to check that out. And, uh, yeah, go see a soccer match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know our family. I mean, we really just this last year missed the, the Dodger games, the soccer games. I mean, just getting out and about. So these are really safe environments. They have lots of protocols in place. They're outdoor venues. Right. Um, so I think a lot of people are itching to get out there and see them again. Yeah, I, I, think, that's, I think that's true. I definitely <laughs> think that's the case. From what I have been noticing anecdotally, I think people are ready to, uh, to get out and about a little bit. So, so one other thing that I wanted to make sure and mention is that we do have a series of runoff elections coming up on April 6th, and these are for Ward 1 and Ward 3 in Oklahoma City. So if you live in Ward 1 or Ward 3 of Oklahoma City, uh, there are some runoff elections for the city council, uh, the city council seats. And so we've got some articles on Velocity and that I'll have a link to in the show notes that have some interviews with those candidates and their responses on some chamber administered surveys. So you can see where they line up on some issues and how they line up on those issues with, you know, sort of what the chamber would like to see. The other thing that we really wanted to make sure you guys knew about April 6th is the school board runoff elections. School board chair for the Oklahoma City Public School District. So if you live anywhere in the Oklahoma City Public School District, um, you can go vote for board chair. So you want to make sure and get out to vote for uh, the school board election if you're anywhere in the Oklahoma City Public School District. Um, again, same sort of thing. We've got uh, some questionnaires online that I'll have a link to in the show notes where you can check out the candidates' responses. But uh, that's a very, very important election. And a lot of the other school districts in the city, in the metro area, have school board elections that day as well. So be sure to check out, check out if, if that applies to you. But I know that Edmond, Deer Creek, Putnam City, Piedmont, Middell, Luther, Jones, they all have elections among others. So um, no matter what school district you find yourself in, make sure to go vote if you can. And so we're going to keep it pretty short and sweet today. But I, I, the other thing that we wanted to mention, you know, on this podcast, Longtime listeners, longtime viewers, you guys know that we're big fans of river sport. Uh, even when we come pretty close to mortal danger, it, <laughs> when we get involved in those activities, we're big fans of what they're doing out there. So river sport is opening uh, all of their stuff, uh, including the new Ski OKC mm -hmm. feature on Memorial Day. So they're open weekends right now uh, for some attractions, but basically the whole kit and caboodle, 
the whole shebang is going to be open Memorial Day, so you can go and do the Whitewater Center. You can go do the Surf OKC feature, which we've talked about before, uh, which is actually a lot of fun. You guys need to go check that out. And, uh, and the Ski OKC feature. So tell me, what are your thoughts on the Ski OKC? Is this something that you're interested in trying? <laughs> you know, I've only been snow skiing once in my life, so I prefer the water skiing side uh -huh. or the water sports and paddle <laughs> sports. Um, that's more my thing. But, you know, I think it's the, the thing that's cool to me about it is you can kind of make it a bunny slope for folks like me, but right. then you can also get all the way up to black level runs. And so for folks that are more proficient skiers, it can still be challenging and they can kind of adjust it based on your skill level. So that's pretty cool. Very much like the Whitewater Center. Absolutely. Because, uh, you know, they can adjust the skill level and, and adjust the course as necessary. Mm -hmm. And I know they do, sometimes they'll do the quiet hours with the tubes. And so if you want to kind of go down in a more relaxed atmosphere, um, you know, maybe you're not so worried about getting thrown <laughs> off and into the rapids. Um, that's not something you want to do. I can speak from personal experience. <laughs> you do not want to get out of the raft in the middle of the rapids. Just yeah. Uh, whatever you can do to stay in the boat, that's what you need to do. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun both ways. But Yeah, and even for locals, too, um, they have a great summer camp schedule there as well. Yeah. Uh, my son did one of their camps last year and just loved it. You kind of They do a different activities every day of the camp, um, and it's another way to just introduce them to paddle sports and all the, thing, all the activities they yeah. have out there. It's they really have fun. so much to do out there. I mean, it really is. It, it's, it's really incredible, and another one of those things that makes Oklahoma City unique in terms of um, our uh, some of our attractions and some of the offerings that we have. So. Absolutely. I mean, to be able to do that class of, or really a, even Olympic training venue yeah. of Whitewater Rapids and all the other activities there, and then literally have this, the view of downtown skyline, you're right in an urban setting. Um, it's really unique and special. Yeah, it is. So you guys get out there and check that out. Is there anything else that we that you want to talk about today? Well, I'll just put in a little plug for visitokc.com. There since, you go. Um, you know, since I'm sitting in the seat today for Kaylee. So, <laughs> um, but, and definitely get out and check out your local Homeland stores for our new beer. Um, you know, several of the stores have already sold out. So if you don't find one at your local store, definitely check a different one because um, it's just a short run. So get it while it lasts. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say, yeah, I didn't know that it was going to be a short run. So yeah, get your hands on that <laughs> stuff soon. Yeah, the next one will probably come out in June-ish for okay. summer. Um, we're not going to release who's doing that one yet, so you'll have to stay tuned. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, lots of good, uh, cool beverage-related news in Oklahoma City lately. So, yeah, looking forward to, uh, to trying all the new things that are coming out. So thanks for being with us today. We really appreciate it. If you guys have feedback for us, the best way to get that to us is by email, and that is just at networking at okcchamber.com. If you prefer the social media routes, our social media profiles are generally OKC Chamber. So please, we would ask that if you enjoyed this at all, give us a like, give us a review, as long as it's positive. <laughs> give us a subscribe among us. Uh, uh, most importantly, give us a subscribe. If you're on YouTube, hit the little bell so you get the notifications whenever things come out. We appreciate you guys, and we will see you next time. And thanks again to yeah. Lindsay for being here. Cheers. And stepping in. Yeah, cheers. This is great stuff. <laughs> thanks.